It's been a U.S. policy, though, for decades to prevent Japan from getting well, nuclear weapons. that might be weapons. policy, but South maybe, Korea as well. can I be honest with you? Maybe it's going to have to be time to change. At some point, we have to say, you know what? We're better off if Japan protects itself against this maniac in North Korea. We're better off, frankly, if South Korea is going to start to protect itself. Saudi Arabia we nuclear have to, weapons? Saudi Arabia, absolutely. You They're would be making, fine with them having nuclear weapons? No, not nuclear no, weapons, okay. but they have to protect themselves or they have to pay us. Donald Trump last night during CNN's GOP presidential town hall saying it might be time to allow Saudi Arabia and South Korea and Japan to have their own nuclear arsenals or at least step up with some more money to provide for the common defense. The Donald's policies challenge previous cornerstones of American foreign policy, but might they be effective? Joining us now, the former director of both the CIA and the NSA, General Michael Hayden, currently the principal for the Chertoff Group and the author of the New York Times bestseller, Playing to the Edge. Uh, Mr. Trump's suggestion, uh, Mike, is that playing to the edge? Uh, no, that's actually pretty far beyond the edge, J.D. That, 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 is, that is one heck of a roll of the dice. Look. One of the two or three really big problems we face is the proliferation of, of nuclear weapons. I mean, that's why we go through this whole kerfuffle with, with Iran, and that's a separate issue. We can debate its merits, but no one can disagree. We don't want them to have a, 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 nuclear, a nuclear device. One of the tools we have to slow or stop nuclear proliferation is to extend an American nuclear guarantee to our friends thereby creating a disincentive for our friends to go down this nuclear path. What you just saw the candidate say was he doesn't mind that they go down a nuclear path. That, boy, that, that really makes me nervous, J.D. And then, and then the, the, the last line where, where he says, and they've got to step up or they've got to pay us, that actually equates our alliance system with a, a Staten Island protection racket. Well, now, wait I a mean, minute. Wait, wait a minute, Mike. Let's, let's, let's look back. The, the first Gulf War, okay. George H.W. Right. Bush said, look, uh, allies, let's step in and everybody pay yeah. their fair share. Now, isn't, arguably, isn't this very similar? Oh, no, it is quite similar. And here, but, J.D., the facts matter. He says, uh, we're, we're paying, it's a one-way street. You realize we've got about 28,000 U.S. troops in North Korea. If we brought them home, they would be infinitely more expensive to the American taxpayer than they are now because they are substantially supported by North Korean funding, or South Korean yeah, funding. Yeah, friendly amendments to South and, and Korea. The same yeah. Thing, yeah, and, and, and the... And the same thing applies to U.S. forces in Japan. Our allies do provide substantial funding for our forces there. Now, the only way you can save money with regard to those forces, J.D., is to make them go away. Because if you bring them home, they're going to cost a lot more. Well, one can almost make the argument that uh, we got to do something on our own borders that have been neglected, and the Border Patrol under the current president has basically been told not to enforce the borders. So there's a lot of catch up here on our own shores. I understand the doctrine of posse Lots comitatus. Of issues. You yeah. Bet. Uh, you let's, let, let's continue overseas. You mentioned briefly Iran and that, that separate issue. Uh, now, this whole thing about Iran and uh, the Ayatollah making the pronouncement that. Uh, Iran's strength is going to come through its missile program, not through dialogue with other countries. Uh, has our nation just been played uh, for a stooge? J.D., you know I've talked about this in the past. I admit it's a very difficult problem, but I also say in the book, I don't think the administration I served would have bought this deal. Now, beyond the nuclear deal, that, that box we're talking about here, you've got this entire universe of Iranian activity that should be very disturbing to us. It seems as if, J.D., in an effort to preserve the nuclear deal, we are not pushing back on all the other elements of Iranian behavior that should really concern us. So I'm with you on this one. This is very unsettling. Uh, let's get your take on a story I mentioned briefly yesterday. Uh, our Pentagon ordering family members of U.S. military personnel to yeah. leave southern Turkey, even as they say there is no specific threat. So why is this order being made? J.D., I, I, I actually know that for some time now, 
uh, the American Armed Forces have been very concerned with the dependence, uh, not, not in Ankara or even in Istanbul, where there have actually been bombings, but, but further out to the east and south uh, in Turkey. And for a long time now, they, they've been trying to encourage family members that, frankly, they, 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 should, they should go home and authorize departure. Now, now what you're getting is a directed departure that the overall ambient security situation is such that they do want the family members to go home. And I, I understand from folks living there, the folks out at Adana and at Interlik have fundamentally been under a lockdown now for, for several weeks. So, so I understand why we're doing this, even in the absence of a specific plot line against our folks. Uh, General, in your book, you discuss the importance of information gathering at the NSA. Given the increase in terror attacks, uh, have cutbacks in phone data collection here in the U.S. contributed in any way, in your opinion, to the growth of ISIS cells in Brussels and throughout Europe and elsewhere? We've got about 30 seconds, Mike. Yeah, two, two issues, J.D. JD I, I don't think what we've done or not done with American metadata affects the question you asked, but I am very concerned that we may have voluntarily pulled back on some collection out of some sense of political correctness, and that has hurt our ability to defend not just ourselves, but our allies, whom I must admit have complained about our intelligence collection. General Mike Hayden, sir, we thank you for your time. Again, Mike is the author of the New York Times bestseller, Playing to the Edge. And you may have some ideas on what Mike had to say tonight, some comments for us as well. Send your comments to me at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. Our Twitter handle is at NewsmaxPrime. Coming back with Ed Klein.